sponsored by DCP Player, a simple way to view a DCP on any Windows based PC. So, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is everybody's favourite subject, the virtual printing. Uh, that this wonderful mechanism that, that's been invented to help the vast, vast majority of citizens around the world uh, go digital. As we all know, it's a very complex model, and the more you look into it, the more complex it gets. And uh, I, I want to start off just by paraphrasing Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill once said, that democracy was the worst form of government ever invented, except for all the others. So uh, I'm saying the VPF uh, is the worst funding model uh, ever invented, except for the options. And the options are pay for it yourself. So it's a tough model, but it is what we've got. We have to deal with it. So how can we, in a sense, harness its value? The VPF works, as we know, very well for, for large circuits, for big national companies, multiplex companies that are predominantly first run and very, very mainstream in their programming. However, once you start looking at the mechanics uh, of the VPF, it's clear that it works less well for, for smaller servers, you know, standalone operators, you know, with two screens, five screens, you know, six screens, it's very tough for them because they have sometimes lower turn rates, they have different types of programming strategies, and it's, it's a tough model for them to incorporate. And indeed, uh, it's always very difficult for them to actually get into this uh, business in the first place. How many people, how many studios, or how many integrators want to do a deal with a two-screen server? Not very many. So, what have we tried to do to resolve that in the UK? As David mentioned, one of the strategies that's emerging uh, across the world is, is to put groups of small cinemas into larger groups, into sort of their own standalone legal entity that can represent them in, as they go through the whole VPF funding scenario. <laughs> We've done that in the UK, and I'll give you the details of what that group looks like uh, very shortly. Because we're talking about the VPF, we cannot get away from the other dreadful term that, that's crept into our language in the past few years. The turn rate, it, how many films you play on the release date, etc. Because without the terms, you don't get the VPF. So to make sure that we had a viable uh, model that could turn into a, a business plan that works for the whole group, we did a very comprehensive uh, piece of analysis on the turn rates. What we also need to ensure, uh, and I'm using two words here, mass and symmetry. Mass is quite clearly just the total number of cinemas or screens, but symmetry is far more important. Numbers are one thing, but if all those cinemas generate one turn a year, you haven't got a viable business model. You need uh, the symmetry, by which I mean a sufficient range of uh, turn rates that when you average them out, give you a good, viable business model. That makes you then attractive to both the studios, it makes you attractive to integrators, so that a deal can then be done. And, I should say, a deal can be done that's on a par with those experienced by the big, big national companies. So, those are the crucial elements, mass and symmetry. What we have in the UK is as follows. Roughly speaking, about 400 screens, which represents about 130 cinemas. A hundred, more than 100 individual owners who have all come together to form this one entity. And it's important to note that this entity that has been formed is owned by them. They own it. Uh, I don't own it. Uh, no organization owns it. It is owned by the cinema owners. They run it. If you like, I'm just the hired help to, to get them through this period. <laughs> when we did our turn rate analysis, we came out with a combined across the board average of more than 16. Now, 16 is a very, very good number that helps to drive um, a VPF deal with an integrator that uh, is very favorable to the exhibitor. 
cinemas that we have are both full-time, the majority of them, 90% are full-time, but there are some part-time cinemas. <coughs> and whereas the majority of them are privately owned commercial companies, um, local authorities in the UK do own and operate cinemas, and they are also members of, of our group. So, putting it very simply, <coughs> excuse me, that the, the terms are shared across the group. So that the, the number of individual cinemas, if you like, becomes a quasi-circuit. It, it becomes, if you like, just one big circuit. And as with many of the EPF deals, the, the integration part that will fund depending on how you measure it, between 75 and 80% of the deployment costs through its own banking arrangements. So if the complete rollout cost is 20 million of whatever currency, they will come up with 75 or 80% of that. The balance is funded by the cinemas themselves, <coughs> from their own resources, from cash reserves, from bank loans, however that's arranged. We are planning at the moment, based on our latest calculations, that, <coughs> excuse me, I've read the call at the moment, we are planning that the whole group and the integration partner will be clean and out, having recouped all the costs paid, all the interest costs, etc., etc., in about eight years. Now that sounds a long time, but uh, and Michael's going to talk more about it later. <coughs> what we don't know is what's going to happen in that eight or, or ten years hence. We don't know if we're going to repeat the process. Michael will have some insight on that. The crucial thing uh, about the model that we put together, and it's, it's certainly unique in Europe, uh, I'm not sure it's unique in the world, I know there are one or two other entities of a similar nature. <coughs> it's a completely commercial model. No government funding, no state subsidies, no European Union subsidies. It's a straightforward uh, commercial model. Now you could argue that's good, you could argue it's bad. Wouldn't it be nice if the government put some money in? Well, of course it would. But um, I can only speak on behalf of the UK uh, and the likelihood of the UK government at the moment putting any public funds into anything like this is zero or even less than zero. So we have developed a model that does not require <coughs> any subsidy whatsoever. <coughs> the plus side of that is that in certain European countries where the government has put money in, they have sort of strings attached you have to play a certain number of national films at certain quotas, etc., etc. Uh, the group in the UK, because it's working on its own, it, it is not encumbered um, by that particular by that particular requirement. Completely commercial model. However, this is not an easy thing to do. It's a very complex process. It takes a lot of time. And because you're dealing with so many different individuals, as I said, a hundred plus individual owners, uh, it gets very complex. Everybody has different needs, everybody has different requirements, and we, uh, as the management of this organization, have to try and accommodate that. So when I say many different mouths to feed, everybody wants something different. We have to make sure that we deliver what people want, what people reasonably want. Obviously what people want is it for, for nothing, but what they can reasonably expect, we uh, endeavour to do it. But that, I promise you, is not easy. Do not underestimate how difficult that is. I mean, another issue is that even with the breadth uh, of coverage that we're able to supply uh, cinema-wise in the UK, there will still be certain cinemas that lie out side, if you like, of that model, but can't be helped through some sort of VPF system. So, we can never say that we have saved all the cinemas. We can only say we've saved the vast, vast majority. There will be casualties. Um, how many, I don't know. In the UK, I think the final number would be very, very small. But nevertheless, we have to acknowledge that this does not work for everybody. It works for the vast majority, but not for everybody. Nor for the cinemas involved is this a free ride. They pay because they own the company. They pay towards the overhead. 
they pay my salary, my travel costs, my office costs, etc., etc. Legal costs, legal costs are not cheap. I think my lawyer is, is in the uh, audience here, and he will say, Steve, I'm giving you such a cheap deal, but I promise you, legal costs are very, very expensive. But it has to be paid for. And you need to have in-depth knowledge. You need to understand the VPF business, the turn rate business, distribution and exhibition, all those nuts and bolts very, very well. Um, if you don't have that, you're going to run into some sort of trouble. So notwithstanding that we've got a very tough uh, job that we've almost completed, um, nevertheless, you know, don't underestimate it. So where are we today? We have, broadly speaking, agreed terms with a particular European integrator. I'm very much hoping that during the show this week we will make uh, an official announcement. There will be a press release um, about the partnership between us and uh, this particular integrator. So watch, watch this space. We're well down the line of finalising the, the long form and the long term contract with this particular partner. With that in mind, uh, we will be commencing our rollout from April or May this year, with a total estimated time of about 12 to 18 months. If we were doing this a year ago, as we all remember, there was a big logjam of equipment, we wouldn't have been able to do it in that time frame. However, the manufacturers are now uh, rolling out quite, quite well. Uh, they've increased their capacity, and, and that's really, really helped us at this point. So, what I can say is, yes, it's tough, but it's doable. And the end result for us is, at the moment, and will continue to be very positive. The question then becomes, and this is a rhetorical question, it's, it, it's not something that I can answer, or necessarily you can answer at the moment, is to what extent has uh, the model that's been developed in the UK for this sector of the exhibition community, to what extent is that replicable or exportable to other markets in the world? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I have thoughts, I have ideas, but I cannot unequivocally uh, answer that question. That's something that perhaps those of you that have a particular interest can ponder. You can talk to me. I'm going to be around for the whole show. Uh, I'd be very happy if you just collar me when you see me. So that's uh, my presentation today. Um, you're going to hear another presentation about larger groups, but I think you should take heart from the fact that there is a solution. If you think about it, there is a solution for small cinemas if it's put together correctly. Thank you very much.